Time for round two of Coffee Talk. I did the math, you guys. Mm -hmm. I've officially been a parent for 19 weeks and one day. Well, that makes you an expert. I yep. know. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, I have a lot to learn. I'll, I'll be honest. I am far from an expert. And although Leo is just four months old, I'm trying to take in as much advice as possible. So when I came across an article that was titled, Be a Better Parent, I clicked on it, I saved it, and I emailed it to myself. Now, since Kent and Matt are both seasoned parents. But now parents, it's one of your unread emails that you told us about. <laughs> That's right. 60,000. So close. Yeah. No, a needle in a haystack. I know. So since Matt and Kent are seasoned parents, I wonder if you guys will agree with these suggestions put together by MSN. So first up, to be a par better parent, you should listen closely. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds pretty self-explanatory, but putting your phone down to really listen is key. I'm I'm sorry, I was checking my message. Yeah. What did you, you, you were going through your unread emails. Oh. After that, be more available to your kids. Mm. They will notice that you are there for them more, and thus they will open up more. And finally, be totally honest. Mm. When you say totally. That's yeah. my question. How honest are we talking? Yeah, I'm not too sure you want to do that. <laughs> I think that's very <laughs> age dependent. Okay. Right? Yeah, when degrees. you were in high school, did you ever? No. <laughs> I'm. Well, you, you didn't let me finish, Dad. I, I, the answer I, just I, no. I didn't. I know I didn't, I didn't, know I didn't because I didn't. Uh, speaking of sharing feelings, <laughs> what do you do if you have a bad experience? Like talking about like at a store or something like that. Maybe a restaurant or airline. Let's say. I'm gonna sneeze. Oh boy. According to a survey published in the Skim, Skim is the name of it. 25% of millennials say that they would, give a, they would give a company another chance. 40%, these are the millennials, I think that's all you need to know. 40% uh, say they would stop using it. 22% say they would write a bad review. Others wouldn't go as far as writing a bad review, but they say they would tell their friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm one for giving a second chance for like a restaurant. If I go in a restaurant and something bad happens, maybe it was a new place or we just got there on the wrong night or whatever, I'm willing to give it a second chance. Mm -hmm. um, I would never, I don't think I would ever write, a, go online and take the time to write a bad, unless somebody just outright just went out of their way to screw you over <laughs> on something. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, I feel the same way. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the yeah. fine Just line. Just let it go. I'm not going to do business with, with them anymore. I won't be doing it, you know, because it, but I don't know that I would ever. But will you then call your friends and tell them? My parents just had a very bad experience at a restaurant, and as soon as it was over, they called and told me, you're like, and they said, you are not going to believe what just happened to us. Wow. And I feel like I do that with my friends, too. I tell you guys when I come in, but yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. have any friends, so it's hard <laughs> for me to... Hey, funny you should bring that up, Kent, because that leads us to our next story. Oh. When we think of a friend, we tend to think, like if you say the word friend, what immediately comes to mind is your best friend, probably. You know, the one who's been around forever. You talk to them very frequently, maybe every day. But there are actually four other types of friendships that you need in your life to reach optimal happiness. That's according to research. Ah, research. <laughs> research. In addition to that best friend or close friend who has been with you through the ups and downs, you gotta have a lifelong friend. Now that could be the same person, but it's typically someone who's known you since childhood. So more of a like a family friend, if you will. The third type of friend you need is a friend of convenience. This is somebody who enjoys the same hobbies as you, maybe a golf buddy for Kent, maybe they live in your neighborhood, so you, you can kind of do stuff. you don't stuff. necessarily have to like them. Right, yeah. exactly. It's just got a convenience. convenience. Shared it. Yes, it's a convenience mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> don't forget about your work friends, too, Ooh. because you simply can't get through the day without them. And yes, you need someone to commiserate with and complain <laughs> to. Yeah. We never do no, that. No, not during commercial breaks ever. <laughs> Finally, we all need those same chapter of life friends. So think about somebody that's going through the same thing you're going through right now. Could be parenthood, could be retirement, going back to school. <laughs> or all of the above. Yeah, the well, same and there could be some overlap, they say. Right. Like you might have one friend that kind of checks all those boxes, but the experts also say, you can't just rely on one person to fulfill all of no. your relationships. It's like one of those pie charts that, that you know, with the, yeah. the, the, the there's several, several yes. circles Venn and they all overlap in the yes. middle, and, and, right. and there's a small group of people that are in there. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, you know, you, people kid about uh, is my work wife or my work yeah. husband right. or whatever, and 
I think you have to have all those aspects. And there are people here that that uh, um, that I really like. You know, that that I consider my work family. Right? We have yes, yeah. like us. I, I like that you looked in the opposite direction from well, us. I was <laughs> looking to see if any of George Mayer from St. Louis Magazine over there. It's not. Yeah. But anyway, they're here. There's just a couple of them walking around. <laughs> okay. Go. Well, since Matt and I are friends, <laughs> be honest. Do you guys sort your laundry? Yes. Okay. How do you sort it? Whites and colors. And and that's it. I've mm -hmm. actually got three bins. I've got whites, darks, lights. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Kids, though, no sorting. No. Kids, all one load. Cold. You're fine. Okay, well, I feel a little bit better because I thought I was a laundry sorting slacker, but it sounds like you guys are too. According to experts who talk to Real Simple, you really should not wash everything together. Most of you knew that. Here's why though. Separating your laundry by color, fabric, and even soil level mm. prolongs the life of your laundry. Ooh, this is soiled. Sorting also prevents the colors of your clothes changing. Mm -hmm. So how do you sort your laundry? First off, you should read the label. That will help you decide the right water oh. temperature. Everything I wash is on the same temperature and I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. Yeah. Because you don't know what all those buttons mean. Right. There are a lot of buttons. Just hit the start yeah, button. Just go. And also washing machine cycle, which mine is always normal. <laughs> of course, don't wash your dry clean only clean. Yeah, don't do that, man. That's bad. That just, every time I think about that laundry thing, I think of when I was a kid, I went over to a friend's house and I had a cashmere sweater and I left it over there accidentally and I came back to get it and I said, did I leave my sweater here? And my buddy's mom goes, yeah, I washed it for you. It's up on Don's counter. And I went up there and I opened it and I looked. <laughs> it's like a onesie. Uh -huh. Oh, that's cute. This will fit my doll yeah. now. Awesome. <laughs> Stick around because we will be discussing this on today's Great Day Extra Live. GDXL kicks off on our Facebook page about 10.15 this morning. Join us. Chime in. GDXL brought to you by the Bomberito Automotive. Wonderful